I wanted to quickly start off with the difference between class two and class three PCBs. There's really only a few things from a layout perspective that are different, like you need to add um, complete, uh, you know, larger annular rings. Um, but also the stack up is critical in how a board will be built and maintaining a copper wrap. So class two boards are typically used in, you know, laptops, tablets, consumer electronics, where class three boards are have applications in medical devices, military, aero, anything that needs to be more reliable. Class two has allows you to have a visual defects. Uh, and as I was talking about, a breakout in drill, but uh, class three does not accept any of those things. So knowing what class you're designing to or what your board will finally be in production is important. So you can design your, your via sizes uh, and your pad sizes appropriately to maintain the required annular ring. Uh, so, and that plays a role in signal integrity. So the prerequisites, re prerequisites for signal integrity. So I, I just want you to know the basic signal integrity signifies the signal's ability to traverse through PCB traces without distortion. It is the capability to accurately reconstruct the transmitted waveform at the receiver. So there are two main aspects. Do the signals perform the desired functions properly at the receiver? For example, the frequency components should follow the same amount of amplitude change. And two, do the signals reach their destination within the determined time windows? This implies the frequency components of a signal should have the same time shift or delay. The most critical reason for signal integrity issues on a PCB is the quick signal rise times. So when circuits and devices operate at low to moderate frequencies, with moderate rise time, signal integrity problems are rarely an issue. However, when working with at higher frequencies, with a much shorter rise time, signal integrity problems definitely occur. So when there's signal integrity issues, um, you'll see this in the shape of the signal gets distorted, the signal to noise ratio degrades, signal is susceptible to extraneous electrical noise and EMI from other devices. The signal induces EMI to other electrical circuits, either connected to or near nearby. Propagation delay occurs while transmitting a group of signals. So ask yourself, what are the most common causes that lead to this uh, signal integrity issues? So we can categorize the signal integrity issues into these nine factors. So the first one, impedance uh, discontinuity. If the signal encounters a discontinuity in impedance during its transmission, it will suffer reflections that cause signal distortion. So line impedance discontinuities are prevalently observed at starting and terminating ends of a signal intersection points of a signal with a via or connector pin, splits in the return path or reference plane, uh, and most important, via or trace stubs. So to avoid this, you can minimize signal distortion due to line impedance discontinuities by using smaller microvias and HDI technology to reduce the effects of discontinuities caused by vias and via stubs. Route the traces in daisy chain fashion rather than multi-drop branches. Incorporate termination resistors at the source and the destination ends. And use tightly coupled differential pairs that are inherently more immune to discontinuities in signal return path or planes. Obviously, this plays a role in your stack up. And we have lots of information on stack vias, staggered vias, and back drill on our blog, which you should definitely know about. So here we're going to do a quick demo of our impedance calculator. The demo is going to be done by uh, Pranav. So I'll stop sharing. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh...
Let me just stop sharing. Sure. Hello, hello everyone. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, our impedance calculator tool, and this tool is uh, based on the numerical solutions of Maxwell's equation, and it renders very accurate results. And so the results can be used for manufacturing and as well as the signal integrity analysis. So our tool is hosted on our website www.protoexpress.com and you can check out the tool. So we have uh, about 82 different impedance models uh, based on different geometry and different structure. And all the models are available uh, for you uh, if you log in to our website. So you can choose uh, the type of structure. So you can have uncoated microstrip, uh, coated microstrip, embedded microstrip, strip line, and uh, choose single-ended or differential pair model. Uh, it can be non-coplanar, non -co we have coplanar single-ended, coplanar differential pair. We also have coplanar single-ended uh, without ground models, and also a differential pair without ground models. If you're working it uh, uh, without ground models, also, you can see we have a basic models and we also have a composite dielectric model wherein uh, if you have multiple dielectrics, then you can choose a composite model wherein uh, it will take into account uh, the difference or uh, different dielectric composition. So let's take a look at coated microstrip differential pair. You click on the open button and it will open up the calculator that you want to work with. So this is a coated microstrip differential pair calculator. Uh, you need to give basic information, the dielectric information, a trace information. Uh, the inputs will be in mils. You can change the units to inches. If you're working in metric system, you can use micrometer, millimeter, centimeter. The default value will be mils. So you can enter, uh, you need to enter the dielectric parameters like dielectric height, dielectric constant, let's say four mil, uh, dielectric constant is 3.84. Now for this coated geometry, you need to enter parameters for coating height. So uh, the coating heights are generally taken as, <clears throat> what is that the equal to same as your trace thickness. So I'll take this as 1.45 and 1.45. Uh, the height H2C is the dialect, uh, the coating above the trace. So it is generally taken as 0.5 mils. So if you have higher coating, you can change this value. I need to enter the uh, coating dielectric constant. This is 4.2 for solder mask. And you can change this value as per uh, your requirement. Then for trace information, I uh, need to enter parameters like delta W. Now, delta W is a difference between the bottom of the trace width and top of the trace width. So as we know, the trace is not, it doesn't have a rectangular shape and it takes a trapezoidal shape. So delta W is the factor which takes care of that uh, difference in trace width. Uh, the delta W, it depends on the starting copper. So we have given a table, so you can click on the help button. So this table provides you like what delta W value you need to choose depending on the starting copper. So this, ta this table has values in mils and we also have a table uh, with mm. So you can choose accordingly depending on your starting copper. Uh, stake trace thickness is 1.45 and let's say I have a separation of 6 mils. Now I can enter uh, target impedance and calculate trace width or I can enter trace width and calculate the impedance. So both ways the calculator works. So let's check out what will be our trace width for 100 ohms differential pair. Um, you need to press the calculate button near the trace width and it will calculate the trace width for this uh, target impedance. Uh, you can see the calculated impedance. Uh, there are more parameters like coupling coefficient or more even more impedances propagation delay or an even mode and sure. uh, so you can also change the trace width so let's say 4.5 and you can calculate the impedance for this particular uh, trace width so now the impedance changed to 99.62 ohms and also the other parameters are also changed 
So you can click on the show more parameters wherein the uh, inductance and capacitance of the traces are also given calculated. So you can observe those if you, if you wish to know um, those parameters. Also, we have uh, a material construction table, which you can use. So if you don't know what, uh, what values to enter, like what will be your dielectric, uh, pre, uh, pre or core, um, dielectric constant and dissipation factor, we have this table where you can refer, uh, so they have different thicknesses. We have list of materials to choose from, and you can, uh, Take a look at uh, what are the dielectric constant and dissipation factor for different thicknesses for different resin content. Also, for this geometry, if you want to have, uh, if you want to do a signal loss calculation, uh, you can change the tab to signal loss calculator. Here, you need to enter uh, the dissipation factor of the dielectric of, of the dielectric that is present. So, so these inputs may vary depending on the calculator that you have selected. So there can be more inputs here. So, uh, you need to give signal loss input, say 10 gigahertz, uh, standard surface, uh, surface roughness, and say I have a two inch line. You can click on the calculate loss button and this will calculate the losses. We calculate the conductor loss, dielectric loss, insertion loss. These are all per unit length and also the total insertion loss. So these uh, losses are calculated for odd mode and even mode for the differential pair. Uh, we also have a crosstalk calculator. So for, uh, for the, this selected geometry, uh, you can check out uh, <clears throat> well, uh, how much of crosstalk will be present from the aggressor line to the victim line. So you can, the input parameters required here are like coupled trace length. So how long the, both the traces are coupled. So say they're coupled for two inches, the signal rise time on the aggressor line, say I have hundred picoseconds and the input signal voltage, say two volts, click on calculate crosstalk. And we see the near end crosstalk results, wherein we calculate the near end crosstalk. Uh, the near end voltage that you observe on the near end side of the victim line and this is the saturation length also for far end results we calculate uh, and display far end crosstalk uh, the far end voltage is the maximum voltage that you will see on the victim line and then we also display the coupling uh, fext coefficient kf so to do the loss and crosstalk calculation you need to enter parameters and impedance calculator as the dielectric and trace information is taken from the impedance calculator. So you need to first do the impedance calculation and then you can move on to the loss and the crosstalk calculation. Uh, so we'll talk about loss and crosstalk further in the uh, webinar. So, uh, uh, thank you Pranav and then yeah.